In last week's video, we covered some common misconceptions about espresso shot timing. If you haven't already watched that video, I will leave it linked up here. In this week's video, I want to kind of carry on with that trend and cover another very common and often confusing question for beginner baristas. How hard you need to be tamping and how precise you need to be with your tamping pressure. Much like espresso shot time, there's a lot of conflicting information out there. So in this video, I'm going to be separating the facts from the fluff using the data collection of the decent and the programmable tamping pressures of the CenoArt PT2. Using a flat 9 bar pressure profile and a 10 second pre-infusion, I set out to see how different tamping pressures would impact the flow and puck behavior with all other variables remaining exactly the same. And here's what I found. Starting with a 35 pound tamp, my dialed in shot was running anywhere between 32 and 34 seconds. A quick reminder that the green line is pressure, the blue line is water flow rate into the puck, and the brown line is espresso flow rate into the cup. For each of the lines you're about to see, it's also important to note that it is an average representation of at least three trials at each tamping pressure. Overlaying the espresso flow rate from a 25 pound tamp, you can see that very little has changed in terms of the flow rate and overall shot time, despite the almost 30% decrease in tamping pressure. Even a 20 pound tamp was again almost identical. 15 pounds was the point at which I started to see what I would consider to be a significant and repeatable difference in flow rate. Despite 3 or 4 trials, I simply could not achieve a shot time above 30 seconds. Even more interesting is how quickly things degraded once I dropped below the 15 pound mark. Here's 13 pounds, 10 pounds, and 5 pounds respectively. I'll break down why I think there was such a steep collapse in a second, but first I'd like to look at what's going on above 20 pounds. How could there be almost no difference between a 20 pound tamp and a 30 pound tamp? That is a big difference. Well, we're all familiar with the traditional 9 bars of pressure that espresso machines typically use, but that's not necessarily a unit of measure most people can easily relate to. 9 bar is equivalent to 130 psi. Let that sink in. 130 pounds of pressure for every square inch inside of your portafilter. So even a very heavy tamp like 35 pounds is almost insignificant compared to the forces the puck is going to undergo during the actual brewing process. It's for this reason that the primary goal of tamping is not to get an ultra compressed puck. You're not even scratching the surface of what the coffee is going to feel once the shot is running. The purpose of tamping is simply to compact the grounds enough to make one uniform density and remove any air pockets that could lead to channeling. But if that's true, then what was going on with those shots that I used less than 20 pounds of pressure with? Were they just channeling all over the place? Well actually, no. I believe that the much faster flow was due to that 10 second pre-infusion that I chose to use. The much less dense pucks from the 5, 10, and 13 pound tamping pressures were able to absorb much more water more easily during the low pressure pre-infusion which meant that when the machine ramped up to full pressure, the far more saturated pucks weren't able to provide as much resistance. I partially confirmed this thought process by repeating the whole experiment, but without the pre-infusion. Hitting the pucks immediately with maximum pressure resulted in almost identical flow regardless of tamping pressure. Even the 5 pound tamp was able to reach a 20 second extraction because of how quickly it was further compressed by the flow of water. With the shots in this test, there was also consistently a slight bump in the flow rate into the cup before slowing back down, which usually indicates that a small channel has opened up and then collapsed back in on itself. Which is not necessarily surprising when pulling shots with absolutely zero pre-infusion. Really, really interesting. But what can we learn from this? I think that both of these experiments clearly showed that once you get above a certain tamping pressure, you have a relatively large window to work in while still producing very similar shots. In my trials with these beans, that level was around 20 pounds. So maybe there actually is some logic to the 25 pound number you often hear thrown around. However, I think it's very important to clarify that you do not need exactly 25 pounds of pressure. You're simply trying to get above a certain level of compression 
above which you start to see some major consistency gains. We also discovered that very low tamping pressures can react very interestingly with long pre-infusions because of how easily that puck is able to saturate and how quickly it will then flow once hit with full brewing pressure. Again, those differences start to go away very quickly above around the 20 pound mark. All right, I hope that you guys found this as interesting as I did. I really enjoyed playing around with this and discovering some things that even I didn't really know. If you did find this video interesting, please leave us a like and even consider subscribing if you wanna see some more like it in the future. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.